Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning and welcome back. Um, good to see all of you in person again this week after kind of a week out of church sent into the world. Diane and I sent off to the Michigan United Methodist Annual Conference. Um, there were a couple pictures of that in the announcement and Diane and I will give a report about that next week. Today we kind of have a busy Sunday morning. We'll be observing and celebrating and exploring the holy event of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit and what that means in our lives and we'll be observing Holy Communion and then following church we're having a potluck. So if you're at home and you're watching this live and you're thinking I forgot about that. I want to come, put on your PJs, grab a bag of chips, and come on in. How's that? Um, there is room for all, and we would love to see you. Just a couple of other announcements. Um, this coming Saturday is our uh, Every Other Month Swiss Steak Dinner fundraiser. I know we have some people who are unavailable. So if you are available and you've not served and you want to come, please see Diane after worship or sign up on the board outside um, and we'll make that happen. It's really made a difference in kind of the financial life of our church in this year and we want to keep on that trajectory. And lastly, if you are present, in your bulletin this morning is a little insert asking for some input on what you would like us to explore, what you would like to hear me preach, what we'd like to consider through the summer. I tend to like to do pretty scriptural drop-in, drop-out kind of services in a busy summer, and it's, it's my turn to ask you. So if you know that right away and fill it out and pop it in the bulletin, great. If not, you can take it home and bring it back next week. As long as I know by next Monday, I'm okay. How's that? <laughs> but uh, not, not this Monday, the Monday after. <laughs> so um, just be thinking about that, praying about it, thinking of kind of where we've been as a church and what you think you're curious about or we should explore because we learn together. I learn from you and God as much as you learn from me and we learned together. And that is where I'd like to go through the summer. So all that being said, may we just take a deep breath and let it out and just be present with one another, with God and with the Holy Spirit on this morning as Diane leads us into worship. Good morning. I'm Diane Garfield, lay leader here at Christ United Methodist Church, and we welcome everyone. Um, before I forget, I was asked to tell you all hi from Ken Lewis and Brian Steele. Uh, they were at conference, and I think there, there may have been a picture up there, I'm not sure, um, of the of Gary and me and Brian and Ken and they they both wanted you to know how much they miss you and love you and wish you well so with that please join me in the call to worship like the disciples we gather in this space united by our relationship with the risen Christ we come ready to receive what God has to give just as tongues of fire descended on the disciples, we receive the gift of the Spirit's power and inspiration. Just as we resurrected Christ's breath, breathe the Spirit. Uh, sorry, just as we resurrected Christ, breathe the Spirit onto the disciples. We receive the gift of the Spirit's same wisdom. As the life-giving and peacemaking Holy Spirit blazes through us today, we receive the gift of the Spirit's fire that unites us as the body of Christ. Amen. Please join me in prayer. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. Open your hand to us, O oh God, giver of good things. Do not hide your face from us. 
Should you remove your spirit from us, we shall surely return to the dust. Send forth your spirit in this worship service today, and let us be recreated. Renew us, O oh God, with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, I'm Jim Eldridge, and with me today I have the pleasure of Deb Fryman and Sandy Boyd and Diane Garfield to join us, join voices, and just give us an even stronger leadership from the stage slash anvil. So this morning we are singing a song that may be new to many of us, but it's a very easy song and very appropriately um, themed as Spirit of God. It's uh, calling on the Holy Spirit, and that's very appropriate for us this morning as we celebrate this first Sunday of Pentecost and God breathing the Holy Spirit upon us that we might not only experience her in um, everyday life in the, in the world, but within our hearts every single day as we have accepted Jesus Christ into our hearts. So let's celebrate the Spirit of God.
for that. That was beautiful and it's so fun to hear multiple voices singing together. So thank you for that. We come now to a time of offering in our worship service, a time where we give back to God of that which we have been so freely given. So as the ushers come through, may you give today as the Holy Spirit leads you to give and may it be a blessing to you and to God. Please rise in body or spirit as we sing our prayer and praise in the doxology. God from whom all blessings flow, praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God the source of all. Christ, whose power all lives, praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Loving God, on this Pentecost Sunday, when we receive the Holy Spirit anew and consider its powerful presence in our lives every day, we give back to you as the Holy Spirit has led us to give. May that be so in our gifts, in our words, our actions, the work that we do for you in the world, the prayers that we offer. We are so grateful for all that you have given to us. We pray all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Please be seated. We come to a time of prayer in our worship service, and I'm just going to start with the obvious joy that we have been, we've been 
waiting and praying for the safe delivery of the baby for a couple of months, well, for about eight, actually. <laughs> so let us welcome together Anastasia Marie Crackle. Woo! <laughs> they will be happy to, Brian and Ashley and Elijah will be happy to introduce you to the new member of their family after worship if you have not met her, but she is just a beautiful little baby. We are so glad to have her in our church family and to know that she is here and healthy and sound. And two weeks in, Ashley's out and bring her to church. So God bless that too, right? <laughs> yes. All right. So all that being said, um, we'll enter an attitude of prayer and we'll just take a minute or so at the beginning that you may offer the joyses, joys, joyses, and praises and concerns on your own heart to God as we begin. Let us be in prayer. Loving God, as we come to you with the prayers of our hearts and minds and spirits on this morning, we join together offering true praise and gratitude and joy for the birth of Anastasia in our midst, for every baby born healthy and sound and in a family that loves them. We are grateful, and that is a joy. May you be in all families that struggle, that may not have their situation, their circumstance, their world, their lives in order as a baby is born for all those babies who are born with their own health struggles. May you pour your grace, your mercy, your help, and your sustenance on all of those families. Loving God and this week we we pray for rain we pray for that for our community for the eastern canada where wildfires burn for other parts of the country in drought and even as we pray that we know there are places that need it to stop raining <laughs> and we understand the weather engine of our planet is complicated and yet we thirst so, Lord, we just give this to you, knowing that in your way, in your timing, in the construction of this complicated world on which we live, all things work together for good. Loving God, we pray today for all those who are hurting, for friends recovering from illness and surgery and injury, for those We pray for those uh, in the last days of their lives. May your presence be known closely to them and to their families in a world still complicated and full of violence, of hatred, of confusion, of conflict. As we call the Holy Spirit to be among us, on this day, we call the Holy Spirit to be present in all of those places. May you pour down the flames of love and peace and compassion and mercy all through our planet. Loving God, we give this all to you, knowing that you love us beyond measure, that it is our call to love one another and to take your love beyond these walls, beyond this live stream as we leave today. We give you all this, praying in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
What happened that day when the Spirit arrived? When the Holy Spirit came? What happened then? It got loud. Loud enough to be heard all over town. Fire appeared, divided and dispersed to each of them. The outsiders came running, and they heard the fire talkers tell of God's mighty works in their own language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, Libya, Rome, Jews, proselytes, Cretans, and Arabians. The Spirit had come to describe the glory of God in their native tongues through those who followed Christ. These representatives of the world stood astounded but curious, bewildered but ready. Then Peter showed them from the scripture exactly what it meant, revealing God's promise to all who trust in Jesus. And many believed, and many repented, and many were baptized, and many were saved. The Spirit had come. The church was born. Amen. That scripture was taken from Acts, and now I'm going to read from John 20, 19 through 23. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors, because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. All right, we've had a battery pit stop. We'll see how all that works as we go along the way. So, Pentecost. The video telling of the Acts 2 story and our scripture lesson from Diane from the book of John present two Pentecosts, two accounts of receiving the Spirit, two sides of our own Christian story, two retellings of our own varied experiences. And we need them both, don't you think? There are times, glorious times, wonderful times, exuberant times, when the Spirit overwhelms us and we are set on fire. We are shouting in languages somehow we don't really know. There are times when joy spills from us and laughter pours from us and we can't help but be carried away by the wonder and glory of the God we worship. An Asbury kind of moment, right, Barnett's? Right. So read Acts 2 again this week. Please read it again. It seems familiar, perhaps, and somewhat tame from this distance of more than 2,000 years. But try, read it again, and try to put yourself in that room. Recall the despair and the fear that soaked through the layers that the disciples sought to cover themselves with. Jesus had come and gone. They were still so unsure of what was happening. Remember the emptiness that gripped them as they tried to avoid thinking about the rest of their lives without Jesus' presence among them. They had a taste of life being fully alive full to the brim, as we talked about during Lent, being alive like they never knew possible, and now that taste was gone. 
might have avoided eye contact with the others in the room, afraid of swirling down the drain into the void that threatened to consume them every time they breathed. But then a sound shook them out of their stupor. As the video said, it got loud on Pentecost. It sounded like a freight train. If they had a clue what a freight train was, maybe like a desert windstorm blasting the sand into a scouring force, exposing the bones with surprising speed. And yet this sound, this roar sounded different somehow. It was not like an oppressive threat, but rather like hope. Hope? Hope in a wind? Hope that blew through their despair like the wind drying sheets on a line. Freshly washed sheets fluttering in this wind lifted into a new day, drying their tears and their fears. Kites flying in the blue sky, tethered only by their faith in the one who was gone and yet still somehow present with them and in them. Remember that feeling of being overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit, that joyous certainty. Remember flying on the wind of faith and for a moment believing in eternity like you could feel it bearing you up with grace. And the fire, remember the fire. Remember the fire in your bones that you had to let out in laughter and movement, in dance and in alleluias. Luke writes that it was divided tongues as of fire that settled on each of them. But let's be wary of that word divided. It's not a separation or an individualism as we think of so much division in our world today. This fire was inclusion, the kind of inclusion that we talk about, the tongues reaching out like octopus arms, wanting to gather in, to bind together, to make one. This was an individual experience that had a corporate reality. They were each in this together. They were all as if they were one. This is a fire that unites, a blaze that leaps from one to another and to all. This is a fire that builds up, not one that destroys. Unless what is destroyed is all that would keep us from leaning in to the joy of this day. All of this was glorious and totally unexpected. They were gathered together for Pentecost Originally, an agricultural festival celebrating the first harvest of the growing season, a story told in Exodus. Later, it became a commemoration of the giving of the land of Canaan to the people of Israel. And then, even later, it morphed into an observance of the giving of the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. Sounds like American holidays, doesn't it? One thing, then another, then another. All are important times of celebration, but nothing that indicates the power that was unleashed on this day. I'm sure it caught the disciples by surprise, too. They were used to a low-key holiday, but instead found themselves in an encounter with God that literally blew them away and literally changed their lives and the world forever. The day of Pentecost came like the sound of a violent wind, Luke tells us. It was fire, it was power, it was chaos and noise, but it was also meaning, and it was hope. And then to be filled with the power to be, the power to grow, the power to love as Christ loves, the very things that we pray for when we pray to receive the Holy Spirit. And that's what Pentecost is all about. It's not simply a birthday commemoration, a marker along the road, a milestone in our Christian year. It's a moment of power, an offering of transformation. So how about it? Are you ready to come to church on Sunday? 
who knows who you might be once you've been windswept by the Holy Spirit. Maybe we'll be the next Asbury, the place where the Holy Spirit sweeps through in powerful ways. Are we ready? Are we really ready to say, come, Holy Spirit, come. Enter us, change us, transform us. It can be hard to be ready. It can be hard to rise to the occasion of this kind of Pentecost. We like the, the streamers that we have. We like wearing red and orange and the songs and even awed by the depictions of fire that we see dance on our screens. But the breath within us might not be quite a mighty wind. Maybe it's a little bit more like a sigh, like a collective intake of breath, of pain, of sadness and grief maybe of uncertainty or fear. Not a gust, but a sigh. And we don't have to play act a wind we don't feel or a fire that doesn't warm. We can just sigh. That's a breath too. A pause. A catching our breath kind of breath. A sigh. So let's all just kind of take a breath. Let it out. This congregation has kept on going and going and going through all kinds of things. One of the things we talked about at annual conference is how weary at some level we all are and yet how hopeful we all feel and how those two things bind together. And you know what, Diane, I think they bind together in a sigh a bit. Here we are. We're ready, but we're tired, but we trust. Maybe our breath is more than weariness and exasperation. Maybe there's a hint of contentment. Contentment is a rare commodity, often just a little out of reach. If I can just get this done, if I can accomplish those goals, just acquire these items, save this money, master these skills, then maybe I can find contentment. But in the meantime, there's work to be done, miles to travel, burdens to bear, struggles to endure, plants to be planted this time of year, and on and on. Contentment isn't a word that speaks into our experience often. Life is too hectic, sometimes too empty, too hungry. Except then, maybe sometimes, once in a while, like a breath, like a cool breeze on a hot day. It is just there from somewhere. Remember this, there was a little pre-Pentecost preparation in John 14, starting in verse 23. Judas is asking how they will know he is the Christ. Jesus answered, whoever loves me will keep my word. My Father will love them and will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever doesn't love me doesn't keep my words, and the words that you hear aren't mine. It is the word of the Father who sent me. I have spoken these things while I am with you. The companion, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I told you. I, Elijah's saying, preach. That's what Elijah's saying. Preach. <laughs> peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I give you not as the world gives. Don't be troubled or afraid. And then the passage Diane read from John 20. Call it a quiet, quieter Pentecost. No getting loud. No thunder, no shaking. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them. And this is the resurrected Christ. He said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, Peace 
be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they are not. Two words, or rather the same word twice in that preparation passage and in the post-resurrection passage, peace. Peace I leave with you. Peace be with you. Sounds the same, really. Not much to distinguish them except life or death. The first passage is on the threshold of death, just before Jesus is to die, and the second is in the glaring and holy light of the resurrection. That's what separated them, the last breath. He breathed his last, Luke says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He didn't speak it, he cried it. In a loud voice, a voice choked with pain, a voice gasping for breath, he pushed himself up on the spike driven through his feet, straining the nails through his hands so he could catch enough breath to cry in a loud voice. And then Luke says he breathed his last, except he didn't. He breathed again. He breathed some more. Peace be with you. He breathed on them the breath of the Spirit. He breathed peace. Receive the Holy Spirit. The Spirit he commended to God. The Spirit returned to us in a breath. Peace. Breathe on me. In the heat of the moment, in the struggle of living and loving and finding our way in a complicated world, breathe on us. Give us peace. Not a peace that resolves every issue, not a peace that fixes everything that is broken, that removes responsibility or covenant, that answers every question or removes every doubt. Breathe on us that we might find peace enough to continue on the journey that we are on. Peace enough to work toward resolution. Peace enough to mend the broken that allows us to limp along with grace and confidence. Peace that breathes through our responsibilities and covenants. Peace that lifts up and binds together. Peace that casts out fear. Perfect love, peace, casts out fear. Where does this come from, this peace? Is it self-generated? Well, there are disciplines, disciplines of our faith, of our spirit, meditations that call us to worship, study that drive us deep into the living word, sacraments like Holy Communion that lift us up and bring us closer these and more but we don't create this peace we receive it like a breath like a breath that comes from elsewhere from beyond us the rituals and the disciplines are designed to shape us into vessels better able to hold the peace that breathes into us it is a gift a joy an unexpected encounter a cool breeze that fills our sails and sends us across the horizon into new worlds of love and joy. A promise from one side of life fulfilled from the other. A description, an image, a story told to hurting and hungry hearts that can become the wind of change in our world. He breathed on them feel him breathe on us this morning peace be with you receive the spirit of holiness of ordination of mission of ministry of love receive the flames of joy and fire and movement and action receive them both receive them all and then love love from the strong center of peace from the contentment of faith, from the flame of joy and 
Holy Spirit fire of putting your hands in the source of love and joy and peace. Lean into it, trust it, receive it. He breathed on them, on you, on me, on us. Please pray with me. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with life anew. Come, Holy Spirit, come, that we may love what you love and do what you would do. Breathe on us, breath of God, till we are wholly yours, till all this earthly part of us glows with your fire divine. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we um, sing a song and prepare for Holy Communion, if you are watching online, we ask you, invite you to gather the elements that you may celebrate Holy Communion with us. starts out with, uh, to me, four verses of thanksgiving, one for um, calling us all together, and uh, the others singing of the privilege and our, grat our, our gratefulness for the um, opportunity to share in the body and the blood of Jesus Christ as we share in communion. And then the mystery of the Holy Spirit gifted to us. And then finally, um, as I think of the last one, I think of a, <laughs> something that was quite unplanned and um, very, I don't know what, it, what the word is, but it, it was very pleasing to me. Um, Roger happened to be working in a clothes closet the very day that this group was practicing these songs. And he came up with the idea, since people were traveling up and down the stairs to go to the clothes closet to open the door so that everyone could hear our practicing, which in their, in their perception pro probably was rightly praised to God. And so we helped, hopefully, for a few people transform their experience of of, uh, serve, of being served to also one of uh, praise and focus on God as, as they came and went. So as we think about all these wonderful gifts that God has given us, may we reflect in our daily lives the last verse of this song, which is to serve one another. So shall we sing together hymn number 629, verses 1, 4, and 5. You satisfy the hungry heart With gift of finest wheat Come give to us, O saving Lord the bread of life to eat as when the shepherd calls his sheep they know and heed his voice so when you call your family lord we follow and rejoice you satisfy the heart with gift of finest wheat come give to us O saving Lord the bread of life to eat the mystery of your presence Lord no mortal tongue can tell whom how the world cannot contain comes in our hearts to dwell you satisfy 
satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. You give yourself to us, O Lord, then selfless let us be to serve each other in your name in truth and charity. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. So we come with hungry hearts and spirits and bodies where they, where they are on this day, but we come to this table, table of the Lord's Supper. Not mine, not ours. This is the table of Jesus the Christ. And it is open to all. You come by opening your heart to Jesus, even for the moment coming to receive, like that breath, like that breath of spirit and fire just by receiving. I can remember when COVID first started, there was a lot of pastoral and theological debate about whether communion could be taken online. And people came down everywhere in that, and um, it, it made for some interesting <laughs> conversation among pastors. But in all of that, I can remember my heart just said, the Holy Spirit will do what the Holy Spirit will do. And our job is not to be in the way. So on this day, as we take communion together, may the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit will do. And we'll start with just some moments of silence where we just confess our our sins, our faults, our feelings, whatever I call, whatever is between our hearts and God's. On this morning, we'll have a little bit of pardon and assurance for us all, pastor included. So may we just start with some moments of silence. Loving God, we thank you for your forgiveness, your peace, your grace that flows so freely, the breath of wind and grace that comes upon us today. There's nothing we can do to deserve it, but we offer our thanks and our praise in response. May we continue to follow you in love, faith, and trust in every day. In the name of Jesus Christ, you and I are forgiven. Amen. Amen. And when we come to the table, we remember, as we remember on this Pentecost Sunday, the events of that day on the Lord's Supper, we remember that Jesus and his disciples, while he was still living before all of this happened, was eating with his friends, celebrating another festival, Passover, reclining and dining and singing and just enjoying, but knowing what was to come. And at the end of the meal, he lifted up a new piece of bread, one that wasn't included in the liturgy of Passover, what he knew, what everyone would expect. He lifted up a new loaf and he broke it and he said, this is my body, which will be broken for you. 
Whenever you are together, take it and eat and remember. Then he lifted a new cup of wine and he blessed it and he said, This is my blood which will be given for you. Whenever you are together, take and drink and remember. And so that is exactly what we do today. We come together to tell the story, to tell the story of Pentecost, to receive the Holy Spirit, to receive the Holy Spirit in this sacrament left by our Lord. I'm going to read the exact parts of our liturgy of Holy Communion in the United Methodist Church because we end all of that with these words, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Hear the words of these gathered people as they pray the prayer taught by your Son. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And we'll be receiving communion this morning in front by intention. And so Diane or I will break off a piece of bread, say the body of Christ broken for you, and then dip it in the cup that is offered, saying the blood of Christ given for you. And then you can take and eat and return to your seat. And then we will be going through um, to reach those who aren't able to come forward at the end. So as Sherry plays, may you just come forward as you are ready. Eat and drink and remember.
let us celebrate the presence of the Holy Spirit as we sing together, Sweet, Sweet Spirit, hymn number 334. And uh, will you stand as you're able? Thank you. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face, and I know that you the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for these moments, we lift our hearts in Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been remarked when we shall leave this place. Amen. Amen. Amen to a little bit of revival right. <laughs> on this day. As we go from this place, Again, just a reminder of our potluck afterward. If you forgot and came without anything, don't worry. There is always a gracious plenty at a United Methodist potluck. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so for those gathered, um, we'll take maybe five, ten minutes, get all the food out, take a break, do what we need to do, and then we'll gather for prayer before our meal. And for all of us, may the grace and the peace breathed on us by the Holy Spirit be felt in our lives in every day as we go forth. Go in that grace and peace, my friends. Amen. Amen. <laughs>